welcome to another episode of the plant-based Jan adventure series. It's easy to eat healthy at home. I'm here to show you it can be done on the road too or on the coastline in Olympic National Park. in the lower 48. Because Olympic National Park is so vast, nearly a million acres, it makes sense to break the trip into videos into three main areas. I'm going to hit each of the three ecosystems within the park. It's really hard to put a favorite on any one of these areas. They're all so different. You'll have your opinion. Olympic National Park. It's in the United States. It's in the state of Washington. And in the state of Washington, it's in Western Washington on the Northwest corner. Since the park's inception in the early 1930s, nearly 200 million people have visited. Of course, in many areas, it's hard to tell that anyone, even one human has visited. In recent years, that breaks down to about 3 million on average visitors per year. Let's take a look at the three different regions of the park. Of course, we have the temperate forests, including some of the wettest, most rainy rainforests where moss and mist and moisture blanket the trees and all the flora and fauna. Here's the coastline where the park meets the Pacific Ocean with sandy beaches or intensely rocky areas. All of the coastline is scattered with sea stacks and old growth driftwood. The coast is 73 miles long. Many of these miles are not accessible by road or car. Talk about secluded beaches. Other areas of the park include the Alpine area, the mountains, which are the Olympic mountain range. From a distance in many areas of Western Washington state, you can see the profile and the tops of these majestic mountains. The most popular months to visit are July, August, and September, but it does get visitors every single month of the year. the map real quick and I'll show you where the primary home base was for us. Forks, Washington. Great for a few days. As you can see, it's a little town that's not in the park, but it's centrally located to most of the major features. So it's centrally located to all of the coastline and the beaches, the whole rainforest, the Lake Ozette area, Lake Crescent, and it's not too much of a drive to the other major places like Hurricane Ridge and Deer Park. If Fork sounds familiar, it's where you can visit your good vampire friends, Edwin and Bella, made famous by the fiction books. This fun fiction phenomenon has given Forks, which is considered the rainiest city in the continuous United States at 120 inches of rain a year, a new shot in the arm for tourism. There's just basic amenities there, a couple of accommodation options, a couple of very small restaurants, drive-in, there's a grocery store, hardware store. You're going to probably be on your own for the most part. The 
Alembic National Park has 73 miles of coastal areas and beaches. We spent a few days canvassing and combing them, but we didn't even get to all of them. There are beaches with names, some famous like Ruby, Rialto, Mora, and Kalalak. There are also beaches with just numbers. More on that later. Each beach and each area offers something completely different for landscapes and each has a scale of access challenges ranging from easy to expert. We're looking at an overall snapshot of the northern coastline. The green strip is that 73 miles that is in the Olympic National Park. There's another 80 miles or so of Washington coastline to the south. Towns include Ocean Shores, Westport, Ocean Park, Long Beach, I'm going to show you the beaches north to south. The red lines are roads, so you can see there are no access roads except for your feet in many areas. The most northern beach is Shai Shai. The most southern is South Beach. And when I say South Beach, it's Washington. It's about the exact opposite in all ways from Miami South Beach. It's remote, it's colder, the vehicles tend to be RVs, not neon sports cars, and there's a lot of jackets, not bathing suits. Let's check out these beaches from the north or from the top is the Lake Ozette area. And it's actually a pretty major hike to get into that beach. We did the Lake Ozette Triangle, Ozette Triangle, also known as Cape Oliva Loop. It's a little over three miles on each side of the triangle. We went down Cape Oliva Trail to the beach, which was a little over three miles. Then you go south on the beach or north, depending on which direction you're going, doesn't matter. We're going that way. And then it connects with the Sand Point Trail, which is also a little over three miles for a hybrid hike of mostly forest and then a spectacular over three mile trail or beach. The beach is actually the trail and that gives you a really good perspective of both the forest and the beach in this area. I just want to show you this trail again. The little swamp plants and the ferns and this boardwalk is really moist where it's been. It's just wet kind of slick in some areas. It's not raining at all. It's just a really cool boardwalk all through this trail. This over here looks pretty muddy, so it looks like they have done a little bit of infrastructure. We're almost at the ocean. Bear frequenting area. So this is the end of the three mile trail. And now we walk three miles on the beach. Which way will we go? It's like a mystical beach, a lot of rock. We're about a mile into our trail and we're navigating over a lot of rocks and we're getting closer to the petroglyphs, the wedding rocks. As you hike along Ozette Beach, you want to make sure that you hit the wedding rocks and the petroglyphs there. They were carved in the stones about 200 to 500 years ago by the Makah Indian tribe. And it features all these cool images of things that were important to them. We almost missed it, but thankfully a, a young expert who was probably 10 years old helped us find them. A hike that's over nine miles requires a little bit of resting, or in this case, buoy swings on the beach.
Moving south to the next big cluster of beaches in the Lapush area, you can see that you have to go all the way up to the Strait of Juan de Fuca and then back down. There are many miles of beaches that surround the little town of La Push. This is another area with a rich history of the Quileute Indian tribe. In fact, the beach called First Beach is part of the Quileute Indian Reservation. Now we're in the little town of La Push, Washington. This is the La Push Marina and it's about as picturesque as you could get. The Mora area is a couple miles inland and features trails and a 93 site campground. This is the Mora Ranger Station. It's closed right now, but you can still pick up some maps and probably most importantly, get um, a picture of the tide tables. The tides are obviously a big deal when it comes to hiking the wilderness coastlines. There are many areas that can trap you. If you're hiking at lower tide, you need to pay close attention to your distance and the high tide tables and times. Some headlands are only passable at low tides. The Park Service says to always carry a tide table, a topographic map, and a watch. You can get stranded out here. I don't know if that would be a good thing or a bad thing. Let's talk about the names of the beaches or lack thereof. In the La Push area, just to the south of that great marina I just showed you are three beaches. And these beaches' names are spelled out. First beach, second beach, third beach. So they're just numbers, not names. I cannot figure out why that happened. My personal opinion is that all great beaches should have a fantastic, creative, descriptive name. But that's just my opinion. To make things even more confusing down at the southern part of Olympic National Park coastline are four more beaches that have no names. The difference is that they're not spelled out. Instead, they are beach one, two, beach three, beach four. So if you happen to be planning an event or meeting someone, just make sure it's crystal clear. First beach is in a completely different area than beach one. Anyway, on to the first, second, and third beaches in the Mora La Push area. Presenting First Beach. This seems to be like a rock and driftwood causeway separating this area, which is uh, pretty much the La Push Marina area over there. It's all protected. And then over to the left here, we have a, an overview of First Beach, which is more of a traditional beach, a lot of sand. And you can see that today you've got people out in the water trying their best for uh, body surfing and things like that. You've got the sea stacks out in the distance. Just a couple more things to talk about. Let's go into my office and have a quick meeting. Isn't that cool? A little small, but we've got our chairs in there. Welcome to Rialto Beach. We're going to go up this beach and check it out. of this tree is just enormous. For weather,
weather this is about as good as it gets in the summer august it's sunny out and there's kind of like a fog out here it's uh, misty and i can feel like kind of that salt a little bit of salt residue on your skin it's really of course as you can see very meditative too i could just watch the pelicans for hours driftwood hiking you're either gonna hike over the driftwood or you're gonna go barefoot barefoot may be the best option right now which way we're gonna have to probably scramble rocks and driftwood tide but let's go check it out so the roots of the trees actually made this perfect little staircase up natural staircase so where there's a will there's a way this is the top of hole in the rock now you can tell and then as soon as it goes out enough we'll be able to go down and walk through pull the rock right down there This is the trail for the second beach and from the parking lot it's 0.9 miles. You go way up and then you go way down. Um, 0.9 would be if you were parked at the regular parking lot. We parked in the overflow parking lot. Um, so maybe more like one mile, but it, you do. You go up a pretty steep incline and then back down to the beach and we're just seeing the ocean. Second beach. The weather today is very, very typical. So it's misty, it's gray, it's cooler out here. This is August, so it's about 62 right out on the beach. Let's go check this out.
the insanely beautiful and wild coastline. camping on the beach, not a bad little spot. Third beach and I wanted to show you the parking lot here because we have made three other attempts for parking. This whole beach has limited parking and usually it's been full so now we're really excited. We've got uh, a lot of open parking and this is a Monday. It's about noon so that might tell you something. We are here. We just parked in the parking lot. Now we're gonna go 1.4 down to Third Beach. It's so funny how they name their beaches. It is confusing and I don't know why they wouldn't just name the beach. There's so many beautiful things to name them after but that's just the way they do it. So little, uh, little clarification for you. A beautiful mile through the forest and then the last part of the trail goes down and opens up into the spectacular scenery. One thing, Third Beach, getting down here is like an absolute obstacle course. So just be aware of that. Third Beach and the big bleached bones of old growth forest and some very interesting smooth kind of rocks. It's a great beach for walking. And when you look out there, you get hopeful to see low-lying rocks and you think they're whales, but they're really, there's just a lot of rocks out there. As we head down 101 to the most southern beach areas, I'll do a quick little recap of the La Push and Mora areas. All those beaches are incredible for different reasons, but if you ask me which one was a must visit beach, I'd have to say Rialto and Second Beach. Those two are my number one beaches in that area and you really can't choose. You shouldn't be forced to choose. Rialto is great with the hole in the rock and those old growth bleached bones. I love that term, the bleached bones, the old growth forest, it, they just kind of come out to sit on the beaches. The second beach is more isolated because of the access, but it has the stunning formations, including that red cave and an arch at the other end of it. One thing you notice in video land here is that it looks like I'm popping to all these beaches in a day or under 20 minutes. The reality is that it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of days and you really have to pick and choose your favorites. For example, Lake Ozette area and that over nine mile hike was a very long day. 3.1 miles, we have arrived at Cape Alava. And then I spent Quite a few more days just going back to some of the beaches and checking it out doing some what i call recon now we're zipping to the south end and one famous beach unfortunately is closed ruby is closed for now parking lot for beach number four this trail is actually really short and this just goes to an overlook so this is option one Overlook. But 
We need to go down to the beach, so we'll go find that trail. The roots look like they're hanging on for dear life to this log. A little shot of this trail. Obviously, we're descending down to the beach. Really nice stairs. Wow, check out this driftwood bridge. That is amazing. And then you need to note they have ropes here, and there's a reason. It's really steep, but really interesting rocks to get down to the beach. Very popular place. Little natural waterfall. It's got it all going on. All of these rocks, you could just stay here for hours. It's mesmerizing. What makes this beach really cool are those rocks back there. They're all very accessible. Uh, the ones, <laughs> try not to get my shoes wet. The ones that aren't are where the birds hang out, where the humans aren't. But otherwise, you can just swim around there in the little uh, shallow areas and climb up on those rocks. It's sort of like a little playground. Beach three, and it's just a little bump out in the road, no parking or amenities. Beach three, massive sandstone, soft rocks with the gray pebbly beach. Heading to the Kalalak area just south now. We're gonna drive through the campground, show you a shot of that. And then coming up, we've got the famous Kalalak Lodge. We're skipping beach two because we had heard that beach one and two are very similar, as you can see on Google Earth here. We opted just to access beach one. The first amazing thing that you see on the trail are these Sitka spruce with massive knobs on them. They're called burls and are assumed to be caused by stress and constant saltwater mist. It's somewhat unknown, but that's the best guess from the Park Service. So beach number one, I'm scrambling over a big collection of um, drift logs to get up here and to do a pan. It's really just a big, long, flat beach. There's no outcroppings, rock outcroppings on this beach that you can see, but a beautiful beach for just walking. Let's 
scope. I'm gonna scope some of these out for you. 57's not too bad. South Beach at dusk. That concludes our trip. We're at the southernmost point. I hope you enjoyed this trip along the Olympic National Park coastline as much as I did. You notice my name is Plant-Based Jan. Here's a little bit more information on the lifestyle that I follow to stay energized and healthy through these amazing places. I'm passionate about plant-based foods. I'm showing you some shots of some of my favorites. I love creating and cooking, but they have to be over the top, delicious, nourishing, and mostly easy. Rainbow salads, comforting soups, crispy wraps, cheesy breakfasts. There's never been a better time to check into it. There's so much research out there. There's so many people that are doing plant-based and can show you some easy tips. And I'm always asked, is it more prep? Not really. I always say I'd rather spend more time in my kitchen than standing in line for prescription or procedure. It's just, it's all interconnected once you start checking into it. Thank you so much for coming along and sharing this video. If you like what I'm doing, just subscribe and hit your notifications buttons so you'll know when I'm coming out with the next video. I've got a lot more in the pipeline and I hope that you come along with me.